Hey guys, so part of doing a bike build is having all these ideas, trying them out, and seeing what fits with the build. I've got this shock back here, and I've already done a ton of work to it, but I've got this plan, and once it's finished up, it is really gonna stand out against the rest of the bike. Basically, what I've done with the shock so far is strip the coating off the shock body, sand down all the casting marks, and bring it to this brushed aluminum finish. And then I also powder coated the shock spring too. I have videos on the process of all that. But thinking about it more and the placement of the shock on the bike, this type of finish is really gonna blend in with the swing arm and the frame since they both have that similar brushed aluminum finish to it. I know this sounds crazy, but I'm gonna pull the shock back apart, do some coating, and it is gonna look freaking amazing. Now I've already made a few videos on the shock rebuild but this time around, I'm just gonna time lapse it with no tutorial. So enjoy. All right, I've got the shock all the way down to the shaft and clevis. Now to Cerakote the clevis, I'll have to pull out the adjuster here. In order to do that, this set screw will need to come out. Unfortunately, I don't have a way of pulling the clevis off the shaft, so this part is gonna have to stay bare aluminum. But honestly, when it's on the bike, it's not really that noticeable, so not a huge deal. However, I will be Cerakoting the rest of these parts here. I've got some really cool colors in the works. Before I do anything with the shock body, I'll need to pop out the upper bearing, and that needs to be replaced anyways. I've got the seal off one side of the bearing, and as you can see, there is a circlip down inside of there. So once I get that circlip out, I can push the bearing out of the shock body. To remove the circlip, I'll need to push the bearing in a little bit to get access to it. So I've got a socket that fits over the bearing, but isn't big enough to where it's gonna hit on the circlip. I'm gonna put the setup in the vise and push the bearing in just a tad. And to get clearance over here on the other side, I've got a socket that fits over the whole bearing itself. This is gonna go between the vise and the shock body on the other side. All right, I felt it move just a little bit. Now that should give me access to remove the circlip. All right guys, I've got this bearing pushed all the way down inside the shock and there's no way it's going any farther. And there just isn't any room to get a screwdriver in there to pick out that circlip. I've probably spent 30 minutes so far picking out this thing with every possible screwdriver, busted a few, and the damn thing just will not come out. So what I came up with is I've got a few picks here and this seems to be the one that's gonna do the trick. Let's see if I can get it out. Here is the plan. I've got this tiny little flat blade screwdriver and I'm gonna pull up on the circlip to hold it into place and then use the pick to pick the circlip out of the groove. So 
So if you guys run into a similar situation where you can't get a circlip out, definitely give this type of a pick a shot. This is what really did the trick. I'm not sure what I would have done without it. I'm just gonna set up the shock in the vise like I had before, except with the sockets flipped around. And now I'll be able to push this bearing out. That was definitely a lot more hassle than I would have liked, but hey, in the end, I learned something new. I'm gonna clean up the shock body on the buffer for a bit. When I did all the sanding before, there's a few spots that I didn't get very even. Like you can see right here in the light, it's got a little bit of a dip in it. So I'm gonna touch all this up with the rubber sanding drum. I've got the shock body all nice and smoothed out. Really glad I went ahead and did that. So if you guys have seen my previous Cerakote videos, you know how the prep process is. I start with degreasing all the parts, then a soak in acetone, followed up with sandblasting, and then a trip through the oven for preheat. After that, they're ready to spray. I've got these parts cleaned, sandblasted, and heat treated. Just gotta mix up some Cerakote materials over here and I'll be all ready to shoot. I'll be going with black for these parts. I just pulled the black pieces out of the oven after the curing process was finished up. They're looking pretty good. And now the shock body is ready to go in for a preheat. The shock body is all done with the preheat process. And over here, I've got the color mixed up and ready to go in the gun. I'll be going with the bronze color on this one and not the same bronze I used on the triple clamps. This is called a midnight bronze. Should be pretty sweet. Well, I've got the Cerakoting 100% done now. I'm pretty happy with it, but the bronze is a little bit darker than I'd hoped. It's almost like a brownish color. That's all right though, still looks pretty good. 
So now it is on to the assembly. And the first step is going to be installing the new upper bearing that I received from All Balls Racing. So big thank you to them. Looks like they provided the circlips, the bearing of course, and the two seals. I'm gonna get this thing ready to go by putting the shock body in the vise. All right, I've had the bearing sitting in the freezer for a couple hours now, and I should be able to get it started here in the shock body before I put the shock body in the vise. All right, that should be in there just enough to stay in place. So I've got two sockets here. One fits over the bearing and hits on the outer race. And the other one goes on this side and is gonna allow for the bearing to push through the top of the shock. Just gotta make sure this bearing is going in straight. So the bearing slid in pretty easily. I think having it in the freezer beforehand definitely helped out. Once I have the circlip and seals installed, the shock will be ready to go back together. One thing I didn't show after I installed the circlip is I put the shock body back in the vise and seated the bearing against the circlip to center the bearing within the shock. Now before I start putting the shock back together, I'm gonna pull apart the rebound adjuster, grease it up and make sure it's all good to go. So to remove the adjuster, there is a lock screw here, it's an Allen head. And many times these are Loctited. You may have to apply a little bit of heat to it. Let's see how this one is. This one came loose pretty easily. So once that lock screw is out, then just start loosening up the adjuster. And as you turn the adjuster out, the outer ring will start popping out just like that. We're just going to continue to turn that adjuster out until it pops out of the body or the clevis, just like that. So it looks pretty good down inside of there. I don't really see much rust or anything worn. So I'm going to go ahead and grease up this adjuster and put it back together. All right, these two pieces are just going to slide apart from each other. And there's a little spring and ball inside. You got to keep track of those super small pieces. All right, you can kind of see that ball and spring. So make sure that's facing up as you pull the outer part off. It's gonna give things a little wipe down, apply some grease and it'll go back together. For the greasing step, I'll be using this mini grease gun that I show in a ton of my videos. I'll put the link down in the description to where you can buy it. Now we're just gonna slide these two pieces back together. Once you have the two pieces all the way together, you should be able to turn it and hear and feel the clicking action of the adjuster. Man, this thing is super smooth now. Just gonna put a little bit of grease on that O-ring and slide it back into the clevis. Now this is gonna be pretty much like just threading in a bolt. So start turning in the adjuster and make sure the two pieces stay together.
And then once you have the adjuster seated all the way, push down the outer ring, make sure it's that is seated all the way. And then the lock screw can be threaded in. I would definitely recommend putting Loctite on this one. Holy crap, it is unbelievable how smooth this adjuster is now. If you have a sticky adjuster, definitely give this a try. Okay, time to slap this shock back together. I've already covered the rebuild portion of a shock before in a separate video. You can get over that video by clicking the circle right up here in the corner. So I use the Pivotworks rebuild kit on the shock, and then of course, I'll be using Maxima Shock Fluid. Big thank you to those companies for helping out. Alrighty, let's start the time lapse right now. As you can see, the shock is now done and looking absolutely prime. Super stoked at this one. Just for the heck of it, I'm gonna mock it up on the bike. Oh gosh, that is absolutely wicked. Really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you're curious about any of the tools or supplies used throughout the video, I'll have them linked down in the description. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.